My name is David Hewitt, and you're in the Remote Recording Services Silver Truck. Uh, this is a remote recording studio. Uh, this, is, uh, this particular unit is coming up on 14 years of age. Our previous one made it to, I think, 11 years, and uh, the one before that is actually still on the road under diff different ownership. So this is something that uh, I personally have been doing for over 30 years as a remote specialist. And uh, I know that there's some interest in uh, how these things get started. And of course, in my case, uh, it came out of a couple of different uh, unusual venues. I was um, originally uh, bent on building uh, racing cars in the sports car category and uh, flying and uh, those sorts of skills. And those all uh, came in very handy in this in this business, but like uh, an awful lot of people in this industry, I was uh, attracted to it because of the women that were involved in it. My girlfriend was a singer, and uh, I was attempting to play bass in the band, uh, but I turned out to be much better at twisting knobs than, uh, than playing, uh, so I've basically been doing that ever since. The uh, these days, I, there are a number of educational opportunities for people to learn these trades, uh, although most of them, of course, specialize in the, in the studio aspect of things. Um, when I started, there, uh, there weren't really any schools in that sense. If you were starting in that, you probably went to an RCA technical school or, of course, the, the music schools, uh, but there wasn't any, any real technical entree into it. Uh, you basically went out and, and did it. And I was fortunate enough to um, have been working in Bob Lifton studio in Philadelphia when a, um, a television pilot uh, came our way and we had to uh, we had to get a remote truck real quick, an audio truck. And so I called up Chris Stone at the record plant in New York and he had one of Wally Heider's trucks that he had just brought out, and this is uh, maybe 1970, 1971. And um, his crew bought, brought the truck down, and we did one of those one-day uh, circuses with a 26-piece Ritchie Rome Orchestra and uh, you know, a bunch of guest stars and everything, and it was absolutely, it was chaos. It was just chaos. Everything was, uh, was <laughs> going wrong. But this remote crew was uh, was just you know sort of shrugging it off, and they'd fix what was wrong, and they'd uh, you know just calmly uh, deal with it. And uh, you know in the end we had a we had a show, and uh, this this really knocked me out. So I I had had an invitation um, by a guy named Jack Douglas who was pulling cables on that truck. To, uh, he invited me to come up and uh, hang out at record plant. Uh, Jack Douglas of course went on to produce Aerosmith and John Lennon and all those sort of things. So after a trip to the West Coast to investigate their plants, uh, I had actually come back to New York to uh, put together the uh, wherewithal to go back and work for Chris and Gary at the Sausalito record plant when I got hijacked by that same remote truck uh, in New York. And uh, somehow I never got off it. And the um, for me, the, the lure of the live music and of course the road and you know all the uh, wonderful mechanical and technical things that uh, that you have to do to keep these things going but um, for me the studio is too concentrated it you spend the time in the studio the focus seems to get tighter and tighter and tighter on the uh, you know on the music and on the technology and that frankly drives me crazy. The uh, the live shows you are you're involved in the in the in the music at whatever the peak of that particular performer's art is, and it is their sum total. They're they're really uh, putting out all they have, and uh, <laughs> sometimes it's not enough, but. You know, in, in so many cases, it's 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 just a, a wonderful experience, and you're uh, you're really out there living uh, with the music on the road, which is really where it happens.